Good evening. I'd like to welcome everyone to the Thursday, April 6, 2023 Planning Board meeting. If we could all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Um, introduction to board members. To my left, we have Jerry Graybill, myself, Michael LaRue, to my right, Phil Roy, and then Cameron Claddock. We have Irish Griffin for the Code Enforcement Officer, and Hannah Bonine uh, from SMPDC via Zoom. All right. First thing will be uh, the public hearing. Um, there's nothing written on here, but the last one was still open. Is that correct? I believe we kept it open. Okay. Yep. yep. All right, so we'll op keep that open if anyone wants to speak about that. Is this a public comment? Or public hearing. hearing. Yep. Okay. Just state your name and address. Karen Mullane, 47 Alley Pond Road. Hi. I'm still following the Woodland Pond subdivision proposal. Um, it, is this a time that I can ask the board questions? You can ask questions. We just want to answer them until later. Okay. Um, the, I think the biggest question that I have is, has a formal um, environmental review been requested to have Inland Fisheries and the Department of Environmental Protection come out, review the area due to the um, documented uh, Blanding's Turtle nesting site, not just a turtle, an actual nest site. There are two blandings, um, blanding turtle adults that I've documented. <coughs> There's up to six hatchlings that I've captured on photo. So without a full review, we don't know how many endangered species there are. Um, when I actually spoke with Derek Yorks several months ago, he expressed interest in coming out and doing studies tagging some of the turtles and get some data on these. Um, they are highly endangered. So I can't express enough how much, how important it is to have this review done. I've been in touch with um, Wendy Mahaney from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. She, um, from a federal point of view, this turtle is up for is currently being reviewed for federal protections. Um, Mary Beth Richardson with the Department of, um, Department of Environmental Protection, and she's forwarded and included other people on the email as well just to, hey, this exists, looking for some protections. I'm in touch with Colin Greenan, who was a senior project manager with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, who also asked for information about the development proposal and whatnot. I've spoken with Derek Yorks, Alex Fish, and Scott Lindsay from Inland Fisheries and Wildlife. I've reached out to Nature Conservancy, the Bureau of Resource <coughs> Management at Inland Fisheries, Biological Monitoring Unit at the Maine DEP, Natural Resources Conservation Services with the USDA, Land for Maine's Future Program, Mount Adam Ag Agamenicus to the Sea, beginning with Habitat, Center for Wildlife, I'm even in contact right now with David Domino from the Senate Majority Office, who has looped in Jared Gray, who is the legislative aide to Senator Rafferty. I'm sounding the alarm. These animals are dying. Their numbers are decreasing. In 1987, they were listed as threatened. Ten years later, they were listed in Maine as endangered. Their numbers are not getting better. Without a full review, we don't know what we have here. And it is special. And it warrants protection. So David Domino from um, the Senate Majority Office was in touch with Inland Fisheries. He's also reached out to the DEP, but I, he hasn't heard back from them. And Inland, Inland Fisheries states that they have not received a formal request for a review by a regulatory agency. We would provide additional review and recommendations if formally requested by the Town of Berwick 
or the Maine Department of Environmental Protection. So my question is, will it be requested by the town? And if yes, then we're on the right path. And if the <coughs> answer is no, it just will direct me where to look and who else to contact. Um, like I said, we, we don't know what we have out there, and it's, it's pretty amazing. I've, and there's a talk of a 250-foot buffer around the area for, um, like, the wetlands and stuff where the turtles are known to exist. And I'm wondering, um, I don't know if the planning board would do this, if that buffer, when I built my house, I had to stay 250 feet away from a stream that was on the land use map. I think this pond should be on the land use map as well. Um, it warrants the protection and the buffer, not just $250, $50, 250 feet in one specified area, but around the whole pond's edge um, because this pond is the home to these endangered species. So that's where I'm at. Can you provide any answers? Uh, later on in yeah. uh, old business, we'll, we'll Okay. Do you have any questions for me? Okay. All right. Spring is coming up. Turtle meeting season's happening. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Carrie Hilliard, 11 Alley Pond Road. Um, I also just want um, just some further clarification um, from the meeting from last time and just to reiterate everything that Karen has stated um, in regards to the endangered species that are located um, in the Alley Pond Road, Johnny Lane area. Um, I walk that road frequently and I have noticed as of recently, um, just because of the springtime and the runoff and everything, um, that some of the area that appears to be marked as plots right now looks like it's most definitely wetlands. Um, there are streams running through there, um, and that, that is concerning um, to just develop that area, change the whole landscape, um, and how it's going to affect um, the species that are already in that area. I think we, like Karen said, um, I think we do owe it to them and as a town to make our mark and show that, you know, we do care as a town and as a state as a whole um, about our environment and what's going on. So I think we should, um, I know I did ask about it last time about the form. If anybody's filled that form out to request that formal um, review of that area, because I do believe that it is really important um, and it's, you know, our duty to do it. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi. My name is Rick Rains, <clears throat> and I live at 18 Carolyn Drive um, in Berwick, and I am the fiancé of Karen Mullane and the builder of the new construction house that she's going to live in. Hopefully let me live there, too. Um, Is this that why you're on your best behavior? I'm certainly trying. <laughs> um, so I guess it, in that regard, the first thing I want to say is that I support Karen and all of her efforts completely, and the amount of work that she's put in here has been a lot. Um, now, I am a, a carpenter by trade. I have been for 25 years, and so I understand both that development is inevitable. It also employs me. So I'm not here um, in the sense to say stop the development. I am here to support the neighbors and my fiance to make sure that all avenues are followed to make sure that the rules in place are indeed followed and that all due diligence is given to the area and the animals and the neighbors to make sure that this developer can abide by the rules and suggestions from the parties that 
have the power to make them, i.e., Inland Fisheries and Wildlife, <laughs> Department of Environmental Protection, and you guys. Um, and if so, then the development should go in um, if the modifications are met. Um, my understanding through Karen is that there was a meeting between IFNW and Altus, uh, and that Altus agreed to do some modifications. We don't know what they are yet, um, so it's hard to speak on what they've come to an agreement so far. Um, but this application for a further review would in endeavor inland fisheries to look closer um, into the area, put boots on the ground, um, and see what's what. I know that in the beginning of this process, I heard that there may be a third party um, <clears throat> follow up, and I'm not sure if that was to the soil scientists uh, or engineers' um, findings, but I don't know exactly how it works, but the transparency would be important to me that, like, if Altus hires the soil scientist and gets a report from them, um, does anybody, is anybody able to? verify that, that it's done appropriately. Not saying that there wasn't anything inappropriate at all, um, probably not, but you never know when somebody hires their own person for their own benefit, like a realtor hi hiring a, a house sector. Um, so having said that, I hope we uh, cross our T's and dot our I's and move forward. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Okay, so no, no one else is here to comment. Um, should we leave it open one more time? I would. Yeah. I would yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So we'll leave this open. To, um, next is public comment for non-agenda items. If you could just state your name and mm -hmm. address. My name is Pat Belvere. I live at Six Country Lane. Uh, I am here to uh, ask the board alone what has been done about um, uh, making performance standards for gas stations and perhaps other omissions to the land use? Um, I would, I'm going to be having a meeting with James to talk further about this. Um, other than that, I don't know of anything that has been said. I can speak to that when okay. we answer the questions in the old business. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I'm not sure I can stay. I, um. Well, this isn't in the public hearing, so this is just public comment. Oh, okay. So if you want to answer, so you can. basically, um, I've been working on drafting some oh. performance standards. So yeah. they're not at any point ready for the board yet, um, because I'm kind of wearing a lot of hats and juggling a lot of balls right now. But I've been working on um, for. Uh, gas station and convenience stores and solar and um, I've got one more that came to mind that escapes me at the moment and I don't know if I have it in my trusty and rusty mm -hmm. notebook but I've been working on a few of them right. some rough drafts to present to the board okay because I know the they were expecting the application by the end of this month and hopefully something was going to be in place so that you know, well, you had something to say. <laughs> I to don't know. We we don't have any timeline that we're expecting anything for any gas station or solar projects um, coming in. You mean? Yeah, we don't have any timeline for anything because we haven't received anything. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But if they were to apply now, um, honestly, <coughs> I don't know that we're going to have time, as as was discussed before, to get any other land use changes in. But we do have everything we need in our current performance standards and requirements that we can place on them through the planning board to make everything work out. So, well, and Ms. Maybe, Bovera, if, yeah. I, if I can shed some light too, I, I share the same concerns you have with regard to that project and its location. Mm -hmm. um, I can't say much more than that, but um, the thought-provoking forward-leaning questions that I have asked related to that have uh, brought me to the conclusion that because we do not have our own standards, it would fall under the state and federal standards. Right. Um, I have reviewed those. I, I, 
I believe that You're they a are man sufficient. Than I am. <laughs> we could make them more restrictive, but yeah. that we will not meet that timeline. I just want to make sure we're managing your expectations, but mm -hmm. we will hold any project that comes before the board accountable to the state and the federal requirements. I can assure you of that. And well, we will make sure we're well versed on what those are before the applicant comes before the board, if and when. Mm -hmm. And if there's any concerns, we can <coughs> condition them. And then any conditions would be brought into the performance standards. Uh -huh. And right. if any, yeah. if something is built and any issues arise after they're constructed, and if it's beyond my wheelhouse to address, I have all the contacts at the state level to get higher ups in here mm -hmm. to take a peek at things and get everything right. So. And I, I guess I was wondering if um, if this is a time when it's appropriate to get our town planner involved um, in helping get some of these things. Well, rough drafts first. <laughs> first steps first. Rough and drafts, and then I will send then, them out to and Hannah. Then they go, and then they go to the town planner. They'll go to, they'll go to Hannah. Okay. And, well, I'll send them to James first because he's mm -hmm. my boss, my direct boss, so okay. I'll send them to him make sure he approves mm -hmm. and then we'll send them to Hannah to make sure that that a she approves B she can add anything she feels need is needed mm -hmm. and C she can verify that there's no conflict that I've missed with any other ordinance and then we can bring it before the board okay it's a multi-step process to make sure we okay. do it right thanks for because the last thing we, last thing I want to do is just throw something together right. and slam it in front of the board and then a year from now be going, no. oh, this, this didn't work out good. <laughs> so no. No. I'd rather make sure that we're fully protected on the front end mm -hmm. and do it the right way, but we're working on it, I okay. promise. That's good. And then Pat, just yes. so I can answer, you know where I live. Yes. So I've done the same thing that Phil's done. I've reviewed the state standards. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. what I do for work too every day. So uh -huh. I'm going through them. So. Yeah, I guess I'm concerned that there might be some particular conditions, but you can put them on as conditions. We and can put them on. Yeah, and in the public hearing, we can yeah. hear your comments and we yeah. can adjust it accordingly. Mm -hmm. Right. And as was brought up, I think, I don't know if you know anymore, but the state is doing a DOT survey mm -hmm. of Route mm -hmm. 4. Yes, as well. they are. And I don't know if what I'm about to say is out of turn, so I apologize well, to my boss just in case. But um, I did get a call from the person who is proposing <coughs> that gas station, and we talked, and uh, I did let him know that there was a lot of concern about the traffic, and he is very keenly aware that there's potential traffic issues and plans to mitigate them. It's part of his planning process, mm -hmm. and he's watching those DOT studies too. He's involved. So it's, um, I think it'll be okay with all of us working together to make okay. this, like, safe is key, mm -hmm. you know. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. appreciate you working behind the scenes. <laughs> we try. All right. So old, well, approval of minutes for March 16, 2023. Um, I was absent that day, so we do not have a quorum to vote on that. So we will be skipping that, and that will move to the next meeting for, was it April 20th? April 20th, but we did have... Um, one concern, I don't know. Yeah, and we we spoke about it, you so spoke, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll talk with James about that. Yep. Okay. Yep. And then moving on to old business, um, we'll just answer the questions about the Johnny Lane um, issues. Um, as far as the formal review order, um, I will talk with James tomorrow, and and get that ball rolling. Unless Irish has something else to add to it. Um, Mr. Chair, I did get an email. I didn't bring the work phone in here, so I can't read it verbatim. Um, they have been in touch with the Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife, and they are planning a time to come out and do a deeper, more intensive study for the turtles and the snakes. They, they being the that. town or yeah. they being uh, the developer? The developer. The developer. The developer, okay. the developer and I, I, I want to say it was Derek that emailed me, but I don't know uh, offhand who it was. Right. But somebody did email me. The engineer that was here the last time did say that he was trying to get a hold of Derek York to see where <coughs> to go next. <coughs> And I have it in my notes from the last time, and based on and what I you And I do just have said, an email. If okay. you guys need me to, I can run next door and grab my work phone and read you that email. But they have been in touch. They are, uh, the project developers are working with, with DW, uh, DIWF, DIFW, with the acronym <laughs> people to do the, uh, to do the study on that. Um, I, so I don't know that we need to request 
the review formally, but that's certainly something I'll talk that we with can James. talk to James yeah, about. I'll talk with James and make sure that we get the ball rolling for that. Yeah. If, if they don't, we will, and that way we can Somebody solve this Somebody will do issue. it, and we know it's yeah. official. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I know that Mr. Raines had mentioned there was a meeting between, uh, or an agreement between IFNW and Altus. So uh, since the, they aren't here, uh, we can't we really can't discuss, really discuss okay. that kind of stuff. Gotcha. Um, I think even us just talking about this is kind of on the uh, gray scale. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah we're so really we'll just okay. answer these questions that we can, and then yeah. the ones that we don't, when they do show up, then <coughs> we can we can uh, discuss these. And I can also speak to the 250 feet around the uh, edge of the pond. Uh, the ordinances are for the entire water mm -hmm. water area. It's not from like the center. It, it does, we take that into consideration. Um, I believe it's written 250 feet from the high water mark, correct? Yes, yeah. yes okay. and that is determined, and that actually kind of speaks to the next, uh, the next com concern that I made note of here in regards to the wetlands. So wetlands, and um, any sort of wetlands, any sort of, and Hannah can clarify this if I say it incorrectly, but any sort of uh, water, source, whether it be a stream, whether it be a wetland, whether it be a pond, they don't identify it by necessarily by water being there. Uh, a lot of times, particularly when you come to wetlands, they identify it based on the plant types that are growing within those areas. So what may look like a wetland may not be a wetland because it doesn't have the, the type of plant growth required to delineate it as that. And conversely, what doesn't look like a wetland, you may be surprised because it has certain things growing there that they're taking that into account. So there's a lot more involved than just water. It seems, you know, until you start learning about it, it seems like water would be the answer because wetland stream pond. But it's really soils and grass and that type of thing. Um, I think I pretty, pretty basic explanation, Hannah. Did I miss anything or screw anything up? Uh, I think that's good to answer that at this point. Okay. Uh, Hannah, could you provide clarification just on the 250 foot high water mark? Because I got a quick education on that myself. It's not from, it, let's say it's a river. It's not from the bank of the river. It's from the highest or de de point of deepest depth or the center, correct? Or am I wrong on that? Um, great question. Um, it. The, the wording is the high water mark of the stream. Exactly where that is, I don't know. I want to say it is edge, though. Um, I got an opinion that I, it was I, I from the center, but I, I would like clarification on that if we could get that. I think that lends itself to transparency and us doing our due diligence. Yeah, I believe where it's measured from depends on the type of water body that it is. So I think some are measured from the center and some are measured from the high water mark. So... I may be conflating the two, but we can definitely clarify that. Okay. Thank you. Um, do you guys want me to keep going? Or do yep. You guys? Oh, yeah. Okay. Sure. I was just looking to see if I could pull up the chapter 100. But um, as far as Rick's concern about people verifying third-party reports, uh, I'd have to look into that one. Um, but typically, you know, these people aren't going to sell themselves out because their reputation means more than anything else because if they uh, skew for one person and they end up with a lawsuit or something, they're not typically going to have any business after that. So. Irish, I'll say the, the third-party engineer reviewer was hired by the town, not by the consultant. So okay. Okay. Thank you. That's even better. Yep. That answers that question. And then we had Pat, and her concerns were addressed before she had to leave. Yep. So I think we've tackled everything. Well, there was a question about what modifications were done. I don't know if you missed that the last time, but he did list what they changed from our walkthrough at the last meeting as far as the fire hydrant connection, <coughs> making the turnaround, putting the gate there. Yeah, the those right will all be reflected on the new. Right, but he was yeah. asking about what modifications. Those were all brought up and covered at the last meeting. Since then, since then. Um, um, that will be that will be presented when they are when they come back. When they're yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. We can't we can't explain to you their modifications. They have to right. do yeah. that. Yep. Okay. All right. That was it.
Um, moving on, uh, new business, sketch plan review, major subdivision, Worcester Road, R3217E, R2 zone. Are you ready to move on? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, for the record, Mike Sudak, Attar Engineering, here on behalf of Providential Equity Development. I have Pat Carroll here with me tonight. Um, and yeah, quick overview since this is the first time you guys have seen this. Um, this is the first sheet in your plan set. I'm just going to briefly, briefly speak to the project. Um, so this is uh, a cluster residential development that we're proposing. Um, parcels all the way in the northern end of the R2 zone, 77 acres off Worcester Road. It's technically a dual frontage lot. We have a small bit of frontage off Pleasant Drive. Pleasant Drive, I got that right. Um, but yeah, so uh, what we're proposing, um, top of the page there, so the northeastern section of the property, about 20 acres of the overall 77, we're proposing to develop into a 14 lot uh, subdivision of single-family residential dwellings, clustered lots. Um, we're well removed from uh, municipal utilities at this point, so everything's going to be private wells, private septic systems. Uh, it's a simple road, about 1,400 feet in length, ending in a cul-de-sac. Um, the remaining 57 and change acres is all going to be open space. And let's see, what else do I have? Um, this is not in the plan sets you guys are looking at, but I was out there this morning and I wanted to provide a little more clarity. So the highlighter line there, everything to the left of that as you're looking at it, um, is all open field. So the tree line is this section of where we're proposing and then the remainder of the lot is all wooded. So probably the first 800 feet of the proposed roadway is all just in open meadow, uh, open farmland. Um, there's an existing stone wall that's going to be running along the southern end of the proposed right away and we're going to try and preserve as much of that as possible. The, the southerly lots that come off that we're going to need to you know, make curb cuts disturb a little bit of the stone wall but we're going to be preserving as much of that as we can. Um, yeah, I really think that's it. Um, single family dwellings, like I said, 2,000 plus square feet. Um, there isn't a ton of relief on site. Base, we could do basements if we have the relief for it, but the site is pretty uh, gently sloping from east to west. But you guys will see that when we get to a site walk. So I think that's really all I have. I'd be happy to take any questions. Am I reading correctly? Lots one, three, and five are those are those wetted or wetland areas? Is that what that? Shaded area signifies. Or? Yeah. So mm -hmm. the first, the first three um, on the south side of the road, the bottom, underneath the uh, the proposed driveway. Yeah, that's um, meadowed wetland. So mm -hmm. it's not forested or scrub shrub wetland, um, but it is hydric soil there. So the building envelope for those are a little bit tighter, and everything else is pretty dry. So my question is, lot A. Yes. Are they building that right now? Yes. Is so that included on this subdivision? It is a homestead exemption that has already been portioned okay. off and is being developed. Okay. Um, so it is not factored into any of the density calculations or any of the... Okay. My, my concern was just I, I've seen construction yep. stuff working over there and had no clue what was going on. So at, yep. least, at least this is kind of clearing that up. Yeah. So that, that one's under development. So the, the top left lot, as you're looking at the page... Um, and then soon soon to be de developed or already being developed um, the opposite side of the proposed road is mm -hmm. going to what's effectively going to become lot one should this development be approved but right now it's just a lot that's being developed on the remainder of the parcel okay so if if the subdivision should occur it'll eventually <laughs> become lot one we have proposed this in such a way that we wouldn't be creating a non-conforming lot but okay. yeah good question and the, the area that looks wetted between uh, lots, f is it six and seven? Is that is that flowing water or is that standing water? So it, it, it's not flowing water. Um, it does, it, it's a pretty deep channel, surprisingly. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's right along the tree line north of the, um, the proposed travel way, and it, it's probably a 
three or four foot deep, just grassed swale, effectively natural swale. Um, Is that not, a naturally occurring or, or was man-made burn? I mean, <clears throat> I can't speak to whether it, gotcha. my, my, get, my guess considering the rest of the pitch surrounding it is that it was probably man-made okay. um, just at the edge of the field. Yep. Um, it doesn't have water perpetually, I would assume, you know, heavier rain events, it's probably flown pretty good, but yeah, um, well, you know, we'll have a culvert crossing through there. Um, probably pretty wide one because it is a pretty deep channel, but yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Um, any other questions? No. Hannah, do you have anything to say? No. Um, no, I'll not at this point. Okay. I'll just bring up for the record, just for transparency purposes, that um, a yes, they do have the two properties going, the two buildings going, which are both legally permitted, <coughs> and they're doing their inspections. They're doing nice houses. Um, B, while I was out there doing an inspection with Pat, I had stopped there. I'm sorry, this week has blurred together. I think it was yesterday I went over there. No, it might have been today. It was today I went over there, and I had to stop at one of the abutters. Um, he had asked for a notarized form, so I was dropping that back off. And he did ask that um, if there was any plans for uh, buffering in between the properties that are being built and his business. Um, and I did, uh, it did let Pat know that. I okay. conveyed that directly, and I wanted to make that a record. Okay, at the public hearing, hopefully we can get some more. Um, yeah, I just wanted to. I yeah. wanted transparency that I did speak yeah. with Pat about something that an abutter had okay. brought up because I saw them two minutes apart. So, all right. Next is we should schedule a site walk. Mm -hmm. um, the twentieth. Is that is that going to be good enough time wise? Should be right. Does that sound? Yeah, that's fourteen days from today, right? Yeah. So, so give you enough time to get out public notice, I guess. Is that cutting it too close? I'm a little worried about the timeline on that. I mean, I can. I'm, I'm working tomorrow, anyways. I can get some notices out. I just don't know. Uh, All right, so James let's, let's give you the benefit let's of time go. and kick it to the next, the next scheduled meeting. Yeah, so it will be I May. I hate to do that, but it's just... I the timelines are timelines. Yeah. Tell us what you can what you can. I don't, know, I don't know that I can May realistically pull off the 20th with proper notice. We'll go for May 4th then. May 4th. Does that sound okay? Yeah. Well, okay. What would you like us to, to stake just, out there? Just stake out the, the road yep. um, <clears throat> and just the lots, like the just where the... Corners of the lots are. Yeah, like the front side line. Yep. Okay. You got it. Okay. Thanks, guys. Um, what time? Like five, five thirty. Starting it's to get light. darker it's now. Just light. Light. Five o'clock. Five o'clock site walk for everybody. Mm -hmm. All right. Hannah, we'll put you on Zoom and just drag you in my my pocket. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Hmm. All right. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Next is the uh, second public comment for non-agenda items. Hi, Carol Mullane, 47 Alley Pond Road. Um, it, this is more just about Alley Pond itself. Okay. Um, about a, a buffer being put around the pond. My house is 75 feet off of the pond. I brought Jen when she was acting um, code enforcer. I brought her physically out to the property and said, this is where I want to build my house. Is this okay? And she's like, yep, it's a man-made pond. It's not on the land use map. The stream is. You're fine from the stream, but the pond is not on the land use map. So 75 feet is plenty. Now that there's endangered species, then I believe the 250 foot is warranted, not just recommended, but to be, it, it's a man-made pond, and at what point is it established, I don't know, but it's, it, uh, you guys have seen it, it's pretty established. So, a um, 250-foot buffer, I, I think. But you're 75 feet? I am, because okay. at the time, 
I'm just I just wanted no, to I make am. sure that that's that's no, known, I mean, you know, I, mean, you know, it, it, I, I if, did my due diligence. Yep, the yep. the land was offered. I mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was away from where I needed to be, but okay. Um, but now we know what's there. I mean, we didn't know what was there at the time, so now we do. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah, it's I feel bad about it. It's okay. <laughs> right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Rick Rains, 18 Carolyn Drive again. Just to speak a little bit more about the, the house at 47 Alley Pond. Um, yes, we followed the rules as they were uh, in play at the time. So we, ironically, and it's not lost on me, the irony of how close we are to the water. Right. Um, what we have done, well, let me back up one step. When we looked at the property and purchased it and got a building permit, um, all by the book, we had no idea of the animal and wildlife that existed right. no in the area. Were done clearly, before that. clearly. Right. Um, when we discovered uh, Turtle Haven, as it uh, as it seems to be, um, we have gone ahead as a couple and decided to drastically change our landscaping plans so that we are less intrusive um, and less. Um, obstructive of turtles coming up to find a place to lay their eggs. We had planned on a ground patio. We are now going to elevate a deck so they can crawl under it. Um, so we're trying to do our best to put our money where our mouth is and, uh, and help the turtles even though we clearly are the most invasive property um, to where these turtles are right now. And I just wanted to, to say that. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. All right, and I'll close that public comment. Uh, informational items, do you have any? Is this my deer in the headlight look? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, um, as you all know, because I'm, I'm, because I'm sitting here, uh, I no longer have an administrative assistant. We are doing some interviews next week, um, so good Lord willing and the crick don't rise, we will see a new face. Um, hopefully the beginning of next month. Whoever we hire will need to give a notice, obviously. Um, that having been said, I'm going to take this opportunity to ask you all's opinion um, if you would be comfortable with me continuing to be the primary person that comes to these meetings rather than the new hire because I truly enjoy the opportunity to ask my questions and voice my opinions on the record. But if you prefer to have an impartial you know, the administrative assistant here instead, that's fine. Or I, I think having you both here, and that's a great mentoring opportunity for you to help her cut her teeth into how we do business. I, I, yeah. For I, think, I personally think he, that's he what her. He, could her. Be he, her. her. Yeah. he, her. <laughs> could be anyone. <laughs> um, but them. them. Um, it would be a great mentoring opportunity for them to see how we do business and how you do business and then reevaluate. Yeah. I think as a speaking role, I'd rather have you as the speaker and then just kind of learning because as a technician they don't really have that authority to be speaking about things unless something d is needed to be said but I mean between you and our planners Hannah and Lee J I think that most of it can be said through you guys okay I just I'll be honest I also think it kind of sweetens the pot for whoever we hire if they know that I will take the bulk of the meetings and they don't have right. to come all the time right. <laughs> well so. I mean technically they're I, supposed I'm their role is more administration stuff yeah. filing work and they, organizing they're it gonna and, listen to the meetings and right and, and do the minutes, the minutes and, and yeah. do all the emailing email yep. tags but so you guys are comfortable with me being the basically lead yes. you're okay with that too Hannah <laughs> yes, and I bring my coffee timer, and I have been sipping slowly. Um, <laughs> but we, um, without saying too much, I did. I haven't had a chance to see if Anna emailed me back. We, the, the uh, applications are starting to roll in, gentlemen. So nice. busy season is upon us. Oh. Uh, building <coughs> code enforcement. My end of things is super busy. Planning looks to be picking up, and. Um, yeah, not nice. whole. I I don't know. My brain is fried. I've had too much coffee today. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there was anything else. I really am working on land use um, ordinances. 
uh, something that does kind of pertain to the planning board that I think is going to really help the public. Uh, I am going to do some, oh, actually, I do have two things for you guys. But uh, one of the things I'm going to start doing, because part of my role with the town is to do informational videos, um, it, which I've been, unfortunately, too busy to really do a whole lot of right now. But I want to do some on land use um, and kind of explain to people how and it'll be good for me because I've asked Hannah and Lee J to send me whatever information because I'm like a sponge and I want to learn all about the planning board stuff so I can best facilitate. But I want to start doing some videos about what our zones are, what requirements are, setbacks, what people can do in them, and do some about the planning board meetings, basically kind of what our procedures should be for every applicant that come through so the public knows and they know what we're doing and why we're doing it. So I think that would be very helpful because what I've seen here is a lot of questions that um, have come up for the various projects that I think could be easily um, understood by the public with a simple explanation of these are the zones, these are the building requirements, um, and it can't hurt. So I'm going to do that. Uh, the other thing is, and this has become a, um, it's kind of <coughs> becoming a bit of an issue. So. I spoke, bless you, I spoke with uh, Jody, uh, Jody, who's the head of transportation here, and James, uh, street signs, street signs have been an issue. And I guess they have not really been addressed with the developments. Um, what we've done is we've created a new street sign request form, <coughs> and that way we can get something in writing. Um, I think what we're leaning towards, and Hannah, I'd really like you to weigh in on this, what we're leaning towards is once the project's approved and the street names are chosen, we would like to have the applicants pay that directly to um, Jody's, to the Transportation Department, so that they can order the signs, get the signs up as soon as the roads are ready, but do that up front, because that payment is separate, and a lot of our developers are not understanding that in order to order the sign and have it put in, $250 charge, they need to fill out this, you know. Um, I'd so like is the issue a lack of signage or just standardization? What, are, what is the issue at hand? The issue at hand is that we have no, and I wasn't very clear on that at the beginning, I apologize. That's okay. Too much coffee. The issue at hand is that people are requesting street signs of me, and we have not apparently had, I guess at one point um, before Jenny ended up going like split between the two towns, she had a process that she was following, but then when she went South Barwick completely and Joe came in, everything kind of got a little mishmashy, which it's, it, it happens. It happens. Yep. You've got people operating different ways, and that I guess kind of got dropped and no real procedure pick up there. Yeah. Um, so we want to start implementing this procedure that it, it, this way it keeps highway paid up on what they are doing. Um, they can order the signs because sometimes the signs do take a while to come in and we don't want people waiting on street signs. Uh, it will also additionally, and this is huge for me and this is why, I mean if Hannah, if you don't want to do it this way, I completely get it. You're, you know way more, way, way more about this than me, but um, for me, E911 is an issue and it's it's been an issue that's been concerning to me since I started here. Um, I, I know that people don't really care if their houses are numbered and in the E911 system until they're moving in. I care about our contractors working on these houses because as much as life happens and people need emergency services when they're living in their homes, the risk is as exponentially higher when you got people swinging hammers and using power tools. So I would like to get the street signs, get the street names picked out as soon as possible, get the street signs up there and me be able to do my E911 sooner rather than later uh, because I am your E911 addressing officer in addition to your code officer and your deputy health officer and your planning board administrative assistant. I'm a little busy today. But I really feel it's a, it's a priority of mine to be able to protect everybody, including the buildings as they're being built. So I'd like to be able to implement the street sign thing at the start, once it's approved, you're going to do one of these for each one of your streets in your development. Jody and his guys will work on getting the signs. Irish will get out there as soon as you guys have a road made and get you some house numbers. 
would you guys be amenable to including that in and Hannah is that something we can include in the process for approval I don't know where that fits into your world um honestly I'm not super super familiar with it because kind of as you said it's one of those they get approved and then public works yeah, takes yeah. care of it um but it sounds like a great idea to me um are you the one who approves street names or is that well that's all me <laughs> okay so yeah I think I think it makes sense as a streamlining process to get things going and everything um I don't know of any formal process in order to kind of enforce you know that being what we do when things are approved um but it sounds like a great idea so if I can figure out how we make that like a formal part of the process, you're on board. Yep. Board yep. on so board. I, I know we've talked about it before, and I think there'd be a lot of value because there's there's so many moving parts when when these projects come before us, and and us being all volunteers and you being administratively overwhelmed with your current duties. I, I think there'd be a lot of value in us. We don't have to do it, you know, at a at a meeting per se. We can do this virtually and embrace technology. Mm -hmm. But let's come up with a checklist for an applicant I, I know we have a checklist but let's dust that off and and add these things to it that way we're not missing anything um you know we, we can spitball that uh on the interwebs via email and, and come up with a, a checklist that works for us and that way every time a new applicant comes before us one we're holding them all to the same standard and two we're not missing incredibly obvious things like street signage and i just think it's going to make your job easier and it's going to make our job easier hey is the checklist done good to go and i, I I don't think that would require a lot of administrative effort on or coordination on our part. No, we could even just <coughs> add that to new business one day um, and just make it part of the meeting so that way it's more formal and then we can kind of deal more with it as it comes. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, I do have some checklists that I don't know, Hannah, if they came from SMPDC. Uh, they were in one of our shared drives as I was going through and they've there's their checklist for conditional use site plans. Um, for major subdivision, minor subdivision. I almost think there was four, so I think I'm missing one. Well, let's dust them off and make them our own. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> Hannah, do you want to be included on those email yeah, chains? definitely. Uh, Especially right, if the originals may have come from us. <laughs> <laughs> I know they came from That's like they the story probably, of more my than life. I don't did. know where anything I mean, comes SMPDC from. SMPDC has been working with Burwick for quite some time now. No. Yeah, well, James James is very creative with his documents, <laughs> too. <laughs> so it he might is. be something that he took from them or took yeah. when he was a planner or Tammy yeah. or, I don't know, I see about 50 names I don't recognize. But yeah. I'm, I very much like that idea. Thank you, Phil. Mm -hmm. Because it might be a little more administrative work on the upfront end, but if it makes everything run smoother, it'll streamline and it holds everybody to the same standard. We're not yep. shooting from the hip, you know. Yeah. Not that we shoot from the hip, but it, it definitely makes our job it's, easier. It's it's not shooting from the hip. It's making sure that there it's are crisis things management. That are, yeah, and well, making sure that we're not forgetting things Correct. is very important. Mm -hmm. So thank you guys. That's all I can come out of my little brain today. Okay. I don't think I have anything else. May I just ask a scheduling question? A scheduling question? Oh. Oh. <laughs> you confused me. <laughs> um, we, we, you can speak with me after. We can work on that. Okay. okay. Um, yeah. uh, if there are no further items for consideration this evening from the esteemed Burgess Room in the depths of the Berwick Town Hall, I'd like to make a motion that we adjourn. Second. Okay. All in favor? All right. Thank you. Good evening.